How you doing, everybody? It's Wolf Den Podcast time. Well, how are you doing today? I can't really move my arms because I have severe sunburn on my shoulder blades. <laughs> what have you so, been doing? This is good. We're beach people now, Bob. This is what oh, happens. Oh, the you worst have kids. type of people. I know. I hate it. I'm gonna be all leathery and stuff. Uh, I don't know if you know this Twitch crowd, but uh, the, the Wolf Boys are very fair-skinned boys, and this. Oh, this you curse don't. You definitely know on. this. This curse has been passed on to my children, and we decided on Sunday to take them to to the local aquatic outdoor symposium and i thought i applied sunscreen everywhere but not on my shoulder blades so this right here me doing this with my hand <laughs> very painful i'm gonna stop doing that so what's the deal with italians because they like they tan well but also don't there's like a, there must be like a threshold you know yeah i think i think the problem is we're a mixed breed because we also barely. have some German and Irish in us. We so, have barely any of that, though. I know. I know. But that's my excuse for, like, why we don't tan very well, if at all. I think I think we need to get over the threshold. I think we need to burn. We think we need to burn it off. That's See, what I that's think. What, that's what mom used to tell us every time we'd go on vacation. But I'd never get that tan <laughs> from the sunburn burn off. I would just get burnt. Right. So, anyway, Kikoba, yeah. thanks for the 31 months. If I had three apples and you had eight apples, hey, shut up, shut up. If you had three, if I had three, uh, if I had three apples, you had six apples and you gave me two of your apples, can you loan me $5? It's been a long uh, time since I've done a math problem. They did that because they know how bad we are at math. Hmm. LJWV use with 11 months. Uh, Woohoo! Sub anniversary on a podcast night. Happy 11 months, Wolf Bros. Thank you very much. Uh, Anderson, thank you for the five months. Good evening, Wolf Bros. Nice to see you. Nice to see you also. Thank you. CJ Gabriel, thanks for the 18 months watching the podcast from my air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Join the revolution. It will not be televised because it will be in an air fryer. <laughs> 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 all right uh thanks for being here everybody we got a lot of things to talk about first thing i want to a talk about a lot of things to talk about first thing i want to talk about sonic frontiers yes we got a whole bunch of information last week about sonic frontiers yes and people are talking about uh how bad it looks <laughs> it, it is certainly rough i'm mean, not gonna lie so, there's, so there's a lot to look forward to but you're fooling yourself if you don't think it looks rough I titled this, Why Does IGN's Sonic Frontiers footage look like that? <laughs> because uh, they're they're doing the IGN first. They're, they're like, they have the premiere of Sonic Frontiers. Somehow they got it. They got the exclusive look. And uh, they're, uh, they're, uh, they got the exclusive premiere. So uh, they're the first ones to look at the Sonic Frontier stuff. And they're the first ones to give it to us. So Sega gave them the footage and everything. And mm -hmm. they were just showing it. They just hosted it, basically. <laughs> but uh, today, they just uh, they just showed their uh, hands-on, right? It was today? Yeah, it was yeah. the first hands-on preview. Yeah. Last week, they, sh they, showed, they showed video footage of the open world. And then they showed another video of the combat. And this is the first time... Somebody who works there is actually like explaining what's going on and how it feels. So, so I'll be honest with you. When I saw all of the Sega footage, I was like, "This looks horrible. <laughs> this looks irredeemably bad." But today, IGN posted their footage, and their footage looks pretty decent. Like I'm not, yeah. I'm not as worried after seeing their footage. But I mean. Why was Sonic's? Why was Sega's footage so bad, and their and and IGN's footage not? Like, no, especially because like a lot of IGN's footage, they had like a lot of Sega's footage edited in there. <laughs> I, did so, they purposely edit out some of the weird stuff? Maybe. Actually, is this not their footage? Is this? 
did they did he get a hands on and then just use Sega's footage? I think that might be from his hands on footage. Like okay. he was allowed to record, you know, what he played, and that's what that's what it was. Because you're right, it does look pretty similar. Yeah. What were some of the the beats that were scary about the original Sonic Frontiers footage? Well, the, the main thing is the the world. It, it's an open world game. It's the first Sonic open world game. Well, and pause. The, pause. Apparently, yes. they don't like to call it an open world game. Which, whenever whenever a developer says that, it's it. I just I just go okay. So it's not an open world game then. If 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 there if it looks like an open world game and they say it's not, that means this is gonna be some bullshit. Well, okay, so. <laughs> If you want to get into specifics, they're referring mm. to it as an open zone game. Yeah, which and, means there's going to be multiple zones that you go into. And per Sonic Team head uh, Takashi Izuka, uh, open world games like Zelda or other AAA games fundamentally have RPG or adventure worlds. For Sonic, the core here is 3D action game. Our basic idea was to have that take place in an open space. What sets Sonic Frontiers apart is this different approach to an open world game. So I think what he's trying to say is it's not like there's going to be, you know, RPG elements or this grand adventure you have to go on. It's going to be like a traditional Sonic level where you try to go from point A to point B. It's just going to be, you know, in an open space and you can get to point B however you want. I don't understand. So so it's it's an open linear game. <laughs> I mean like Death kinda. Stranding kinda was that. Like it was a big linear game. Like it was big, but like you're still going one way and then you gotta go back. I guess a better way to describe it is uh, did you ever play Burnout Paradise or Need for Speed Most Wanted? E Yes, just a little bit. So those those are open world racing games. Yeah. You can like in the main game, you could just drive around the open world, uh, do whatever you want, uh, you know, explore how much you want, no problem. When you get to a mission, then you get set on a course to go to a specific destination within the open world, and you can get there however you see fit. Right. That's also literally that how Death Stranding works. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm a, I'm guessing it's something along those lines rather but, than like your typical GTA or Assassin's Creed style. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense for a Sonic game because it's like a racing yeah. it's like a racing game. That makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. When you say open zone, it makes it sound like there's gonna be multiple open worlds, which is yeah, not how open world works. Yeah. It, it 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 sounds more like a Mario Odyssey type deal where you where you're dropped into different worlds. Uh, hope it, yeah, probably more expansive than that. The thing with Sonic is he needs a lot of room to run. So like yeah. the big open worlds are 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 the big worlds aren't necessary. It probably just called it zone because traditionally Sonic levels are called zones: Chemical Plant Zone, Green Hill Zone, Marble right. Hill Zone, Angel right. Island Zone. Oh, they're probably just applying old Sonic terminology to the new Sonic gameplay. Okay, maybe they are, but but that's yeah. they, when you say it's not open world, that scares me. <laughs> well, I think a part of that, part of the reason why they're specifically not calling it an open world, this was one of the big criticisms from the first gameplay reveal was it looked empty. Yeah, you know when you think of open world games, you think like Ooh. you know there's. NPCs all over the place. There's, you know, buildings and towns and stuff to explore and look into. Uh, there was none of that here. It was just, you know, the big open space, you know? And, yeah, a lot of open world games have that. Breath of the Wild has a lot of open spaces, but it also has towns and NPCs and uh, enemy camps and a variety of of environments to explore this was just the one you know forest area i thought it was weird that they they said open world games usually have rpg elements it's like okay but that's not what defines an open world game right so it's weird to use that 
as as your as as your reasoning for changing it to open zone, you know? Yeah. Um I'm trying to pull up more of the footage. I guess the first oh, this is the first one. The first one was the most rough. Look, the fact that it's it's uh looks a little empty, I can forgive them a little bit because Sonic's got to run and he needs a lot yeah. of room. So like there being space between the different things that you do kind of makes a little bit of sense. Mhm. Mm but there's other weird things. Like, uh, I took a video on my phone. I was going to tweet it, but I, I didn't because I figured that people were already there. There was one shot where, like, he runs up on an enemy, the camera moves in a weird way, and then the enemy reset itself as if to, like, go into an action. Like, it was a pre-scripted thing that, like, broke. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of weird... There's a lot of like like that like like there's a lot of Sonic just walking for some reason. <laughs> Sonic Sonic slamming to a halt and then just walk just like tiptoeing around. Yeah. Uh I mean that's probably they probably changed the way Sonic moves in this game. Right. So, you know, the anal the analog stick will probably work the way it does in like Mario games. You push it a little bit and then he walks, then you push it full speed and he runs and you probably there's probably a trigger for him to run even faster. Um it is worth noting, and they pointed out in this hands-on preview that what we're seeing is from an early build. So this might not even be uh, what the what state the game is in right now. This is just uh, from an earlier build that Sega had to present to uh, the world for like what the gameplay is going to be. Why that? Okay, so, well, I just I just watched the world pop in on on that on on yeah. on this track that you're supposed to go on. The world the world pops in. Yeah. <laughs> Why would they showcase an earlier build then? They like everybody how much does that. Yeah, but how much? I mean, I don't know how I don't know how much earlier, but like every game studio shows early footage, you know, before it's ready to go out. Well, you know, how many times do like you know EA and Activision and Ubisoft and whatnot show alpha footage? That's like the yeah. first stage of game development. Yeah, but my understanding is they're working on it all the way up until the press gets it. You know, if, if right. they're saying this is an well, earlier build, like how much earlier? When did you record this? Like, did you record it like a week ago or like two months ago? And now you're showing it like, why didn't they just this, wait until they could get a better? I mean, it, slice? It, it might very well be like from two months ago and they probably waited because they have a deal with Sega. You know, Sega wanted to do a lot of stuff in June for Sonic Frontiers. And so they had to wait until June. That would be really bizarre. Yeah. So another thing is that there's this big expansive world and there's this <laughs> weird unnatural looking rails and stuff. I'm actually, I yeah. mean, it's a little jarring and weird, but I'm kind of fine with it, honestly. I, I kind of yeah, like I mean, the way the world looks. Some of the weird stuff in it is weird, but uh, yeah. The, I, I mean, I like I like Sonic Adventure too, so I like the rail stuff. Yeah, so I'm cool I mean, with that. You got to you got to get used. To, it's it's a Sonic game. It's gonna have a lot of like. You know, a weird juxtaposition between a certain type of art design and another, you know? So, and I, so, as long as it, it services the gameplay well enough, which honestly, jank aside, I think this footage shows what they're trying to do here. And I think I get the concept and I think it's a good concept. I'm having so. a hard time putting the jank aside is the problem. Because like I, yeah. I am on board with a lot of, you know, the, the, the concept, but this is coming out later this year. This can't be a concept right. anymore. You know, this has to be right. a game that I can play. Yeah. <laughs> and and if I it's got, I mean, I mean, world popping in, that could be fine. I mean, I've seen it yeah. in other I games, mean, but like. A lot can happen. A lot can happen in the next few months. Mm -hmm. uh, for all we know, like, it could, get, it could get patched, you know, over the course of the few months after release and it turns into the game Sega really wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, but a, a lot of people online, because uh, I've been following this very closely because I'm excited for this game, a lot of people online seem to have the sentiment that we're we're behind this idea, we like what we see, but hashtag delay Sonic Frontiers. Yeah. That yeah, was people, actually trending for, for a few days. People wanted because delay because recognize, it looks rough. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've seen people talk about how there shouldn't be puzzle elements like this. Like how Sonic's supposed to be fast and like having him slow down to do puzzle elements is weird. I think it's fine. I think. Yeah, I think it's fine. I mean, 
the Sonic used to slow down to do platforming sections. This is just an evolution of that. And also, too, it's a big open world. He's got to do something other than run fast. Yeah, there's got to be things in between the running fast. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of a demo that I saw some guy make uh, where it's just... It looks like a regular... It's a video game that's a regular guy fly like sh like running like the flash in a forest and you're just avoiding mm -hmm. the trees and you and you're going like downhill so you keep catching yeah. air and stuff and it looks awesome and this kind of looks like uh what that guy was was going for yeah i'm getting weird like death stranding vibes because of all of the geography and the grass and then the technology that's thrown in there and also yeah. uh horizon zero dawn because one of the enemies uh looked like a horizon enemy yeah yeah uh, a lot of people are saying this big shadow of the colossus vibes because it's you gotta like climb this monstrosity to take him out mm -hmm. uh that's that's interesting because we never really like saw any type of combat like that in sonic games before uh in fact, the, you know, the other video that they showed off was specifically about the combat in the game because it's very different from previous Sonic games. You don't just jump on the enemy and that's it. You know, he has new moves. He has, like, a punch and kick attack. He's got this thing they call the Psy Loop where he, like, circles around an enemy and, like, you can take him out that way. It's a yeah. very different fighting mechanic than what we've seen in previous Sonic games. Yeah, it looks like these are like almost like mini bosses. This guy, yeah, this little, this little like guy doesn't make any sense. Is this the one that I think this might be the one that I tried to record? No, this isn't the one. Yeah, but oh, like, that's it. That's see, it. Like, I guess it, oh, it that was. This wasn't this wasn't the shot that I recorded, but it was this enemy, and I, I guess it does that. You encounter him, he opens up, closes yeah. again. And then I guess you got to get him to open again. But when it, when yeah. it closes, the camera like a, like a resets itself. Hmm. It does like a, it does like a weird that? jarring thing. Look at that. That looks intentional there. When I saw it, yeah. when I recorded it, an, another instance where it happens. I, I think this is it. It looked unintentional. This is it. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting. I'm I'm feeling like I'm being hypercritical. That, yeah, that looked unintentional, but I think it's intentional. Yeah. I don't know. I recorded it specifically because I thought it was an issue, but uh, I think it... Oh, I think I think whoever recorded this just pulled back on the stick on Sonic and, like, stopped him dead yeah. in his tracks and it messed the camera up. Which is weird. Like, be. whoever recorded... Th this is Sega recording this footage, supposedly, so whoever's recording it is not doing it justice. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong. Yeah. Uh, Flo says, do they ever show a mission? No, no. they only show the so little far, side stuff. So far, all they've really shown is like they showed the open world like, and what you can do in, and like some things you can do in the open world and the combat, that the combat was overhauled. They mm. haven't shown missions. They haven't shown cutscenes. They haven't shown uh, other characters that are in the game. They just showed open world and combat. Right. So... Which I think is like the big things that are separating it from other Sonic games. So I guess get those out first before um, we show anything else. I'm very happy this is looking so different from other Sonic games because I want them to want to experiment like this. Oh, this is the big yeah. uh, Horizon Zero Dawn enemy. Yeah. And I, I guess you like, yeah, I guess you like climb up it and and stuff. Yeah. That's cool. I I I I I'd assume this is part of a main mission or or something that you'd probably have to do in the game yeah it i i i like a lot of the concepts but there looks to be a lot of jank that still needs to be ironed yeah, out in there, this there, game there's room for polish definitely also um, i want to see what if there's other zones or if there's other environments that you're going to end up in i want to see that too i don't want to if, if this isn't yeah. i'm assuming this isn't all that there is let's see some variety yeah i mean even breath of the wilds had you know had snowy mountains and like a rainforest and underwater sections and things like that so right also he says that sonic and amy are in this and you like you end up in this world you come out of a portal with sonic and amy uh, uh with with amy with and Tails, Tails. And amy, yeah. yeah 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 
where the hell are they? I haven't seen them at all. Yeah, that's yeah. So like some hint at what the story is going to be, because judging from the, the these gameplay footage, the tone alone is dramatically different from other Sonic games. You know, it's right. very serene. It's kind of serious. It's got like a melancholy piano in the background instead of like the wailing guitar solos of Sonic games past. Mm -hmm. It gives me Sonic 06 vibes in all the worst ways. Yeah. That was another game that tried to take it seriously. It, and... It's another thing that worries me about this. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, we've we both played a lot of 3D Sonic games and yeah, there's... It, it's it's hard to pinpoint what works and what doesn't and uh some of some of what i really hate about some sonic games is when they kind of just force you into scripted events and i'm yeah. just hoping all of these like obstacles in the world and stuff aren't just all things that feel like scripted events you know i don't want to right. i don't want to jump on a rail and then not touch the controller for like five minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're, they're always like sections where it feels like the game's playing itself. We just put the controller down and like let it happen. Yeah, but, I hope I hope that's not the case with some. It doesn't I mean, look it, like it. it. Yeah, it looks like aside from like some sections, you know, you're in control for the most part. Right. So I don't know. Like I saw all this footage and I was concerned the whole time. And then IGN posted their actual hands-on impressions, which, like yeah. you said, I think is. I don't know how much new footage this is, but he was very favorable of it. He made yeah. it seem like this is going to be great and there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah. He ends he ends the article with, uh, will Sonic's one-of-a-kind gameplay translate into an open world? The answer is a resounding absolutely, which is shocking. It, it's shocking for two reasons. One, uh, the gameplay looked so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and two, uh, didn't they get paid to do this? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they got paid to do this, but they definitely struck some sort of... This is the exclusive yeah. uh, gameplay reveal of Sonic Frontiers. So there's definitely some sort of deal involved with Sega. That, that's you know, what... I don't, I, I don't uh, believe they got monetary gain from this, but they definitely got some sort of gain from this. I'm a little confused because like I don't th I'm I'm always with IGN and Kotaku when, when people are like oh you probably got paid off for that review you sh I'm I'm siding with the games journalists they don't get paid off to do yeah. reviews I, I yeah. remember a, a, a story I always go to is uh, when Duke Nukem Forever came out they were they had full a full website ad for Duke Nukem Forever. It was on the whole border of the site. Duke Nukem's face was right there. Yeah. And then right in the middle of all of it was Duke Nukem Forever 5 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> so they got paid yeah. by Duke Nukem but they still gave it a 5 out of 10. So that's why I'm like, yeah. they're not, they, they have integrity. They're not going to do anything. But this is weird because this is, this this seems like uh, an exclusive promotion of the game, and to show I mean, that I, that it, it, to show that horrible footage, and then come in and say everything's going to be fine, I, I'm not really convinced. This is part of their IGN first um, feature, which is when they usually they pick a game that they'll that uh, then become IGN becomes the first people to like preview it, mm -hmm. and I don't. I'm not really like familiar with how they usually go about doing it. Like, I don't know what other games that were IGN first. I'm only really paying attention to this because it's Sonic and it's like a big Sonic game. It's like a right. like the first major, you know, Sonic reinvention in years. Um, but yeah, it is. There is this weird uh, disc a disconnect between you know just how rough the gameplay looks versus just how excited the writer seems to be for this game he does mention you know th that there are some technical issues with the game right but it's a it's like a paragraph not even so it, I, it, I mean i didn't really get to the end of the video but yeah the whole video that I, the, the, the video the most of what i watched was him 
talking about the the game mechanics and 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 stuff and 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 kind of praising it the whole time. Uh, yeah. I didn't I didn't get to the technical issues yet. Uh, LJWVU in the chat says, but it's a hands-on, not a review. It's a hands-on what? <laughs> the hands-on preview. No, it's it's ha first hands-on impressions. Yeah. So is it his impressions? Hand <laughs> yeah, hands-on means he got to put his hands on the controller to play it. Yeah, but there's more to just a hands-on. There's another word after that. <laughs> Usually, hands-on impressions you know like he's gotta g give his impressions unless the title of know. the article is sonic frontiers the first hands-on preview oh uh, okay so it's both he played yeah he played for four hours mm -hmm. that's a lot four hours worth of the game yeah that's a decent amount Especially for that's a sonic game that's as much that's as i'm gonna a, play this game <laughs> that's half of a normal sonic game <laughs> Uh, John got the juices. Nah, I think it's just IGN wanting to get an exclusive because they know Sonic big right now. I think they paid Sega to get the exclusive. That'd be interesting. That's possible. That'd be pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, I, it's just, it, it, it like, like, look, I, I wouldn't normally be i i wouldn't I, I normally side with the creator i'm usually like nah this guy's i'll give him the benefit of the doubt this guy's good they know what they're doing but in this case there was too there's too many things that like weirded me out the obvious broken footage the fact that it's uh an ign first and then and then him like like weirdly praising like a lot of it after just seeing all of that bad looking footage yeah. All that together made me like, wait, what's what I need to see I need to see the context of the deal that they made. <laughs> yeah. Mega Dragon says I thought IGN hated Sonic. Yeah, Will, what's that about? <laughs> there was a period of time when like I mean, to be fair, this was during like the bad years of Sonic, but there was a period of time when like, you know, all the podcasts, whenever a Sonic game would come out, the creators would get on there, the writers at IGN would get on the podcast and be like, well, truth be told, there have never been good Sonic games. Even the they, Genesis they, games were bad. They said that a lot. They, I used to yes. listen to IGN all the time, and they frequently, yeah. a couple of them, a handful of them frequently said there's never been a good Sonic game. That was like a yeah, thing for, is, for a while. Which is just absurd. <laughs> it's to, just to, frankly absurd. Yeah, that's an absolutely absurd statement to make. Yeah, even if you don't like Sonic the Hedgehog, you can you can't ignore the fact that a franchise has been it exists for thirty years. It has been like, bad the whole exist. time. <laughs> yeah, a franchise does not exist for thirty years on meme status alone. Morbius. So <laughs> the fact that you know there has to be a reason why people like this character in these games, and the reason is because it ha like the franchise has had good games. Right. It's just that it's been like on a downward trajectory for a while now. I'd also like to defend IGN. Uh, they probably gave a lot of Sonic games bad reviews because they were bad games. <laughs> at yeah. the time when when the people at IGN were saying that there's never been a good Sonic game, there were not good Sonic games coming out. They were very yeah. they were all bad the ones that were coming out. The best they, the best they, I can they, describe it they, they, they just forgot about the ones like Sonic 2, Sonic 3, that stuff. Well, the the best way I can describe it is, you know, when, you know, before 1999, everybody was like, oh, man, Star Wars is awesome. Star Wars is great. There are three great Star Wars movies. And then in 1999, 20, uh, 2002, 2005, when the prequels all came out, at the end of Revenge of the Sith, everyone was like, has Star Wars always been bad? I think just just never been a good Star Wars movie. So mm. it, that's what happens when, you know, your most recent experience with something is so bad that you forget why you even like the the experience in the first place. You know, right? That's what it is. The fact that you know we we got bad Star Wars movies, so you start to think all Star Wars is bad. We got bad Sonic games, so you start to think all of Sonic is bad. Uh, you. You Kirio in the chat says 3D Sonic doesn't have good games. I stand by that Sonic Adventure 2 
was a great game for like nine months <laughs> and then it immediately got dated i think it was great when it came out but immediately got superseded by uh by uh, mario sunshine and then every I've... other platformer that came out after that I think Sonic Adventure 2 was a great game for its time, and if you go back to play it now, uh, it will be rough. I think Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations are legitimately good Sonic games, especially mm -hmm. Generations. Um, and yeah, and then everything else is just mild disappointment to crushing disappointment. I think Sonic Adventure 2 has that problem where all the Sonic and Shadow levels are great, and all you all the other characters make the game not good but you have yeah. to play all the other characters so yeah. it makes the i guess it would make the game not good <laughs> but for 9 months in 2001 or whatever whenever the hell it came out yeah. it was great it was awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> um what else yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, I I'm I I don't want to say I'm hopeful about this because I'm really not. I have I have very low expectations for Sega to make a good 3D Sonic game, especially after what's been coming out recently. But I am still, uh, I, I I'm I want to give it a shot. Yeah, I uh, I've always been cautiously optimistic about this game, uh, and that has not changed since seeing these previews and stuff, but at least now I have a better idea of what they're trying to do. And I appreciate the fact that it's, they're trying something radically different for Sonic. Isn't it, you know, it, it needed something. Isn't it not a full price game? I think it is. I thought it was like a weird price. I thought, I thought they announced that it was a weird price. I remember they're talking about like, you know, trying to find, trying to price the game like what they think its value is. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a full retail, uh, retail price game though, because it looks huge and like the things they're trying to do with it. They want to present this as like the AAA Sonic game, and the easiest way to do that is with a full retail sixty dollar, seventy dollar game. Did you know they already delayed this game? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I completely forgot that. Yeah, we yeah, probably no, should have mentioned already... that when, when we talked about hashtag delay Sonic Frontiers because they, they wanted already to already delayed it. <laughs> they wanted to release it last year during the 30th anniversary of Sonic, but they said no. We gotta wait. We gotta delay this another year because we want to get this right. Eleven months they del they yeah. delayed it a whole year already. Yeah, the Halo Infinite approach. <laughs> but no, now that I'm starting well to for Halo Infinite. I'm starting to remember they did say something about the uh, the price. Come to explain yeah. that it has to, to, it has been rethinking its game pricing, and will need to raise the cost as they've raised research and development expenses. So gamers should probably shouldn't get their hopes up for a twenty dollars Sonic Frontiers. Okay, nobody thought that. If their disclaimer is any indication, it will likely cost around sixty dollars at launch. Well, we I think, think it, Sonic Forces cost like forty dollars at launch. That's what I'm thinking of. We think it is important to maintain the price by maintaining the value of the IP at high level rather than simply lowering the price at early stage to increase the number of unit sales. That's right. That's what I'm remembering. Sonic Forces was $40 because they knew it was a bad game when they released it. And that's why they're like, uh-oh, sorry, guys. Here, you can have it for yeah. cheaper. So they're deciding we are not going to tell people it's a bad game <laughs> by, by releasing it for $40. Yeah. I, I yeah, I, 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 that, that, when that information dropped, that worried me a little bit. Also, yeah, uh, it does look like an Unreal Engine tech demo. It looks exactly yeah. like uh, every fan Unreal Engine thing that I've seen, and people are like, "Sega make this," and then they did, and now everyone's like, "Never mind." Yeah. <laughs> See, that's why people say fans don't know what they want until they get it. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I I need to get this in my hands to to try it myself. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I. I I was excited when I when I heard about the game at first because I do really want a good 3D Sonic game. 
but I I'm keeping my expectations to a to a minimum because yeah. I don't want another. I was really burned by its forces. Forces was yeah one of the worst games I have ever played on the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, so. I played it on PS4 when there was a PS Plus game, and it's just I'm not mad. <laughs> I'm disappointed. Right. <laughs> That's the best I can describe my feelings towards Sonic Forces. I have to play Sonic 06 because I haven't played it and I want to. Right. Is You'll there have, a fix? We'll have to hook up the 360. Did, did, no. Did, there hasn't been like a fan initiative to fix Sonic 06. There's been a fan of initiative to remake it completely, mm -hmm. but I don't know where it's at. <laughs> That's how bad it is? Yeah. Project yeah, 06? No, yeah. I'm looking at Yeah, up. no, it's it's not not good. Not good at all. Zero it, out of ten would not recommend. This was September twenty twenty one. This is uh Sonic Central doing a doing a playthrough of the project. Okay, well it's not they they <laughs> they can't change the fact that Sonic is running with an actual human woman in his arms. <laughs> yeah. That's they can't change that part of the game. So that's yeah, there's the story so is still gonna be do. the same. Yeah. I don't I don't know if this looks any good either. Yeah, I, 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 mean, honestly, I, I, I think the problems might be the more same. yeah, the problems might be deeper than just technical, you know? Yeah. I think it might be a game design like issue. A, yeah, a design <laughs> issue, a whole like philosophy issue with the game. Right. Interesting. I'd still like to play Sonic 06 just to just to experience it. Oh, anyway, next time you come over to mom and dad's house, get the 360. Then I got to bring a whole ass 360 home with me. Yeah. They don't have. It was never got a PC port. Never got a PC port. It's not backwards compatible on Xbox One. So that's so lame. Oh, them's the breaks. What was the last notification that I read here? Uh, I think we left off on the air fryer. Yes, Scott the Slot. Thanks for the hundred bits. Happy podcast day, Wolf Den Bros. Thank you for all the yaks. Thanks, dude. Winter Chimp, thanks for the 100 bits. Well, I'm half Irish and half Italian, and I tan easily. Well, you need to check your privilege, my friend. <laughs> Is it the German in us? I don't know. I don't think, the 5% the the German in us? The stereotype is that the Irish are, like, pale, don't True. get out in the sun much. So I assumed it was that. I think that there's a threshold we need to burn through. It's just very difficult. Yeah. Where else? Uh, G uh, Ganthet, thank you for the 10 months. Hello. Hello. Kyo Judo KJ, thank you for the five months. Sachi, thank you for the prime. Lost Tech, thanks for the five months. Do you think the push for all digital gaming is hurting games? Quality, pace, length, style. I don't think that would I don't have think any no, I don't think it's hurting games, um, but it has been a debate for a long time. Ever since like the 360 and the PS3 were like online systems, the idea that you know ship a game now, patch it later until it's good, mm. you know, is that you know where where does that become unacceptable? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, that's like, definitely nowadays, an issue. Nowadays, every game gets shipped out, and every game gets patched, regardless of quality even the even great games when they launch get get patched you know but something like we've seen it now battlefield 2042 people hate that game and mm -hmm. you know ea keeps patching it patching it patching it and it's just not fixing what everybody wants to be fixed so you know yeah that's one end of the spectrum and then the other end you get games like halo infinite which people like and they keep patching it and doesn't really change much well people aren't really liking it too much anymore <laughs> people liked it when it came out and then people got bored really quickly because there wasn't a lot of content in it and then right. uh they didn't really add but they, they they would drop like an update and they wouldn't really add much and people got really frustrated with it 
Right. Anderson says No Man's Sky. That's a That's weird a good example. example. Yeah. It's weird because like it's an example of them releasing a game that doesn't feel. F- That's the thing. That I mean, I don't want to say it didn't feel finished because it did. Uh, no Man's Sky felt finished. It's it just wasn't the game anyone was expecting it to be. Yeah. I, I think I think that was an expectations issue. It's a good example of them adding stuff post launch because they added a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, games that released that were broken. I know that there's something recently that I got and I was like, this. Oh well, <laughs> Cyberpunk is a, is the perfect example. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that game has been patched and patched, and it's better today than it was when it launched. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's good. Right. But it's better. I have a video on the Wolfden channel about how everybody's expectations for No Man's Sky is going to ruin the game for them. And then the game came out and everybody's expectations were ruined. I had friends that were so amped about No Man's Sky. And I was like, you guys got to chill, dude. You're going to hate the, you're going to ruin the game for yourselves. And then the yeah. game came out and one of my friends, they, they were just, they just were trying to, like stick it to me like they they they, they it's it's like they it's it's like they were trying to sell me poison they're like this poison's so delicious and then they eat the poison like oh it's so good yeah. that's what they were doing the, the, one of my friends popped it into their ps4 and then was like this is incredible this is the game of a lifetime and it's like you just got past the title <laughs> screen dude you don't know anything about this game yet yeah and then they stopped playing the game because it wasn't good when it came out now it looks yeah. incredible. Have you seen the latest No Man's Sky stuff? It looks awesome. Yeah, th- it, it, I saw the trailer for the Switch version. It looks great. Uh, okay. Oh, that was the last notification. Coming to Max yes. now, too? I did not know that. Oh, do we have anything about the Mac event? Because there was a lot of gaming stuff. Uh, f- No. Because I'd like to look learn. Because they showed off. Uh, they said like you can handle graphically intense games like Baldur's Gate three, and I'm like, is that an old game? <laughs> uh, it came out in 2020, so it's not that old. Mm-hmm. But I mean that that's not the game people think of when they think of graphically intense. You know, we did not talk about the games with gold and stuff. And we completely forgot to... We just went right into Sonic. We didn't uh, do yeah. what we normally do. Our little PSA. Well, because... Oh, to be fair, PlayStation Plus has a good month for June. Uh, Games with Gold is not. Uh, and I think because we're... I, it's it Really, it's Xbox's fault. Because like we're, we're seeing the decline in the free games they give out. And so we think it's affecting Sony too. But it clearly isn't. Okay. Because for the month of June, Sony is giving away on the PS4 God of War, like the re- most recent God of War, of Naruto to Botor Botor to Botor- Baruto? Baruto? No, Naruto to Baruto Shinobi Striker. Nailed it. I see. Weeb status right here. Naruto <laughs> to Baruto Shinobi Striker. I think it's uh, Toe. Yeah. I want to say it's Toe. Naruto to Boruto. Why can't they just like... <laughs> Never mind. And on the PS4 and PS5, uh, everyone's favorite platform fighter, Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. Does it to mean... Also, or, or and doesn't it mean and in in uh, in Italian? No, it means you. It means you. Okay. Yeah. Well, to it means and in in, okay. in Japanese. So Naruto and Boruto. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, cool. So, so that we're getting All Stars Brawl. <laughs> uh, yeah, voice acting is finally coming. <laughs> I saw. See, I, that's an example of a game that came out like crap, and with patches and stuff, it got better because now there's voice acting. I saw on Twitter somebody posted a video of the voice acting, and they were like, "Oh man, I'm so glad this finally uh, th- this update is so good." Oh, here it is. Oh, I can't play it because the website's muted. 
On mute. Wait here. That's gotta hurt. It's four Garfields. <laughs> and they're all talking. Oh, that sounds like hell. Ah, uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I, I hear the game's still very bad. So, so. Yeah. <laughs> Have you played the Warner Brothers one? No. I haven't either. I've heard that's good. I don't know. I don't know. But. I don't really buy it because everybody thought All-Stars Brawl was good. Then it came out and, and I played it and I was like, this is really bad. Well, I think the difference <laughs> is uh, the Warner Brothers one like had a, had a beta that you people can actually play before it came out. So you were right. able to like judge it accordingly. Mm -hmm. This did not. This was just going off off the fact that SpongeBob can beat up Danny Phantom. Right, right. So. But God of War, that's good. That's good. That's like the you know, that's a big title. It's one of Sony's biggest titles. All right, what about games with gold? There it is. Super Meat Boy. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's exciting they got Super Meat Boy. However, no. if you click on the YouTube link I provided, you will see that we covered this. Oh. All the way back. <laughs> oh no. In like the early day the earliest days of Wolf Den Live. Episode 22 on 22. the green couch. June 1st, tw 2016 was when uh Super Meat Boy originally came out on Games of Gold for the Xbox 360. Wow, and Goat Simulator. <laughs> yeah. What year was this? So, 2016. 2016, wow. Yeah. So young. Yeah, and if you remember last month, they repeated a game. They repeated uh, Hydro Thunder whatever. So, it's just so weird because there are so many games on the Xbox original and the 360 that like they could have used for this. But they're... I don't know why they're double dipping. They could have done... Su Super Meat Boy Forever. Yeah. That's weird. It's it's weird. Like I, Super Meat Boy was an Xbox Live Arcade like staple. Like like it Yeah. It, it was like synonymous with that. And Yeah. Super Meat Boy Forever feels like it got no love from like any yeah. publisher. <laughs> yeah. So if yeah, they, this could have been that, but it wasn't. Um, and you also get for Xbox, Avon Colony, uh, Project High Horse, Project High Rise, sorry, Architect Super Meat Boy, and uh, Rascals. Uh, man, my sunburn is affecting my brain. Leave me mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. It's dehydration. So, you got to watch out. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I like to also sure. point out the Dunkin' Donuts cup. I also <laughs> want to say, I don't think my hairline has changed. I think my hairline no. has maintained. And I'm yeah. happy about that. Uh, I still have that Coca-Cola shirt, and it somehow still fits because I am substantially thicker than in that <laughs> old video. Also, all these amiibo out of the box. Yeah, got them the fuck out of there. Uh, and instead of Dunkin' Donuts, I've become a pretentious snob. So it sure has. We also have Game Pass, new games. Got some good stuff. Yes. Uh, let me open that up real quick. We got Dragon, uh, Dragon, Assassin's Creed Origins, the e Egypt one. Yes. For Honor, which is a Ubisoft game that I refuse to play. We have <laughs> Corves. Corves. You know Corves. <laughs> is it Corves or Corves? I have no idea. It's like churches, like the band. Chorus. It's Chorus. Yeah. Uh, Disc Room, which I've never heard of. Ninja Gaiden Master Collections, which is pretty that's cool. That's the uh, that's the collection of Ninja Gaiden Sigma One, Sigma Two, and Ninja Gaiden Three: The Rage's Edge. And Space Lines from the Far Out. Yeah. Okay. But and... you know that's a that's a decent collection of games right there. That's better than what they're offering with games with gold. Is there no? PS Premium? No, uh, because this is the month it launches. Oh, we covered all the games that are going to be in it, like a, like a few podcasts ago. So go back and watch that. So, so I'd also we don't normally talk about Prime gaming. 
No. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you get free stuff on Prime Gaming. Yeah, you, 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 Amazon just gives you free game stuff for like PC and mobile and stuff. Mm -hmm. This month was pretty good. Uh, you can get oh. Far Cry 4, a whole ass Far Cry 4 oh. for, for free with your Amazon Prime. There's also, I don't know if they have it here, but I've been playing Valorant and there's a cool little buddy you can put on your gun. It's a, it's a little CRT little guy. Oh, that's it right there. That little guy is sick. You can just, <laughs> you, just uh, you freaking put it, you put it on your, on your shit. And uh, you put your you you put you log in Amazon Prime and you get a little TV guy. Now I just ruined everything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you can get like free loot and stuff like uh, Valorant. It's pretty cool. Click on games for the full list. Okay, I will do that. It won't let me show the the buddy. That sucks. Uh, the only one I saw that I cared about was Far Cry, uh, but I guess... Oh, there's Escape from Monkey Island is free. That's oh, there pretty you go. good. That's a good one. Uh, WRC8FIA World Rally Championship. Okay. <laughs> Coleco, uh, Astro Gaster, and Across the Grooves. Okay. Far Cry 4 and Monkey Island. So that's pretty cool. I will say, uh, if you haven't played Far Cry 3, Far Cry 4 is very good. If you have played Far Cry 3, you can skip Far Cry 4 because they're basically the same game. <laughs> and I know we well, say that origins. of every Ubisoft game. I know we say that of every Ubisoft game, but like Far Cry 4 is especially way too similar to Far Cry 3. Why are we talking about 4 and 3? Because Far Cry 4 is the game that's free this month. And I'm telling people, if you played Far Cry Three, you're from, you're gonna have you're gonna play Far Cry Four and be like, this is the same damn game. From where is it free? Are you fucking kidding me right now? <laughs> Origins was free. Oh, Far Cry. I'm thinking Assassin's Creed. Assassin's Creed Three and Four are the same game. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Three and Four are the same game. Far Cry 3 right. and 4 are also the same game. What I was trying to say I was agree. that... I agree. Yes, Ubisoft games are typically very similar, but Far Cry 3 and 4 are especially egregiously similar. I agree. I agree with you. So. I, th I thought you mistook Far Cry 4 for Far Cry Origins when we were talking about Origins. Yeah, but there is no Far Cry Origins. <laughs> I'm having a stroke. What's the in-game content for Pokemon Go? Is it just Pokeballs? It is literally Pokeballs. Get some Pokeballs yeah, if you got Amazon Prime. Also, yeah. did you know if you have Amazon Prime, you can also link it to your Twitch account and you can yeah, support this show for free without spending any of your money. You can give us money. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Air you know, cost a lot. we don't we we don't have ads or anything here, which will yeah. soon change because we do have some ads coming <laughs> up. <laughs> Listen, we're big time right. podcasters now here at the Wolf. Yeah, Club, all of a sudden we're like what the in the top fifty podcasts on iTunes for video. Yeah, games? baby. <laughs> yeah, you know what that means. Not a lot of competition in the video game space. Yeah. <laughs> people got to, people got to, you know, try a little harder in the video game space. We shouldn't be up that high. I'm, I'm shocked, you know, because you know how many white guys have video game podcasts. You would think. Right? You would think yeah. the market's too saturated, but I don't know. Yeah, I guess not. Anyway, uh, we just talked about Sonic Frontiers. Is there any news for Sonic Central? Uh, yeah. Today there was a Sonic Central, uh, live stream which is basically uh nintendo direct but specifically about sonic games uh and they did announce some stuff uh an animated project called sonic frontiers prologue which will be a prequel to the game featuring knuckles they didn't really show much else all right that's uh, they awesome a... did they show knuckles yes okay uh it, it's gonna be it's gonna be like one of those tyson hesse animated things though oh it's not like you can't play it okay yeah that sucks I mean, yeah. the Tyson Hesse stuff has been great, but yeah, I, I was I was I think, hopeful that Knuckles would be in the freaking game. I mean, if they're showing, if they're doing a preview for it, 
if they're doing a preview specifically for Sonic Frontiers with Knuckles, then you know stands the reason Knuckles would be in the game. Right. Uh, they also showed off a clip from Sonic Prime, the upcoming uh, 3D animated Netflix show. Shadow's going to be in it. Everyone likes Shadow. We got a new trailer for Sonic Origins, the Sonic Origins collection. It will now come out on June 23rd of this year, um, which is the 31st anniversary of the original game. Uh, this trailer showed off uh, the remastered stages. It showed off classic mode and anniversary mode. It showed off the world map where you can select the games uh, from there. Uh, it showed off the museum, uh, the mirror mode where you can play the whole game, all the games in reverse, and boss rush mode, and Tyson Hesse animated cutscenes. Okay. So that was cool. Uh, Sonic costumes are coming to Fall Guys. You can play as Sonic, Knuckles, or Tails. Um, the Sonic the Hedgehog 2 Blu ray, the movie, will come out on August 9th. And feature deleted scenes, bloopers, and behind-the-scenes clips. Uh, the chem- a chemical plant zone is coming to Sonic Speed Simulator in Roblox on June 11th. And a whole bunch of Sonic toys are coming from a lot of different licensees. And there's a Knuckles-inspired G Fuel drink coming out. <laughs> oh, God. I thought uh, there was and- Sonic in Fall Guys already. Me too. Unless this was announcing uh, Knuckles and Tails also coming. Okay, interesting. Uh, And Sonic Symphony is going to come back in October. Wait. What do you mean back? I don't don't know. Because they had one last year. Remember? The live stream of like... Oh, I did, and it was Crush Forty, and then and then like all orchestra, and they like switched back and yeah. forth. Yeah, so that's coming back. Uh, they did show off a very cool during like the whole licensees part of it, uh, a Sonic wireless controller and charge station for Xbox One, which was really cool. Kinda Where is that? that? Uh, they don't have a picture of it. Let me see if I can find it. Xbox series? I think so. Uh, it's made by Razer. Uh, Sonic Razer Charge Station? Yeah. Go to all, yeah. Is this it? Uh, this is pretty freaking cool. I don't know. Is it uh, white with red handles? Yeah. Oh, it's got Japanese. Yeah, that's it. That's it, yeah. Access denied. Okay. (laughs) This looks pretty friggin' sick, though. Yeah. This was announced in April. Hey, well, first I'm hearing of it. I kind of want that. Oh, so it's this... Wait. Yeah, what's so Razer about it? Because that's that's an actual Xbox controller. Uh... They made the charge stand because the charge stand isn't. That's not a Razer charge stand. Did I they, buy, I don't... they didn't buy controller gear, right? I don't know. I honestly don't know like what makes it Razer. Razer wireless controller and quick charge stand for Xbox. That looks like a freaking Xbox. Yeah, it looks like a controller. It's an Xbox controller. <laughs> am I am I high? <laughs> Inspired by Sonic the Hedgehog for an iconic look, protect humanity with cool blue attitude alongside the world's most powerful hedgehog with a must-have collectible that celebrates one of the most beloved and iconic heroes of the gaming universe. Wireless and universal. Designed to work with... Okay, yeah, we know. Okay, yeah. Okay. Impulse analog triggers. Whether you're firing a gun... That's normal. Yeah. I'm thinking, is it modified like the scuff ones? No. I don't it, know. That's literally the controller gear back. Yeah, I don't understand. I mean, it's officially licensed. It's wireless. Did they do the paint job? That must be the only thing. So you're spending like a hundred something... 
two hundred bucks for a paint job and a stand. Oh, is that what it, it's two hundred bucks? Yeah. So the the controller is what seventy dollars, and, yeah. and and the stand is forty with the battery pack. Yeah. So math. That's twenty dollars more. No, ten dollars more. It's ten dollars more. No, 70 plus 40 is 110. Yeah, and, and you should say 120? They charge 200. 200. 200. 200. Holy fuck. I thought you said 120. No. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so what's the deal then? What am I what, I literally am just getting Sonic on one side and Nihongo on the other side. Yeah, I don't I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, well, it got the, the razor exact. price down pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very strange. Anyway, yeah. uh, okay. I mean, I I think it looks awesome, but not for two hundred dollars. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anyway, was that it? Was that everything that happened? That's it. That's it. All right. Well, that, I I guess they kind of blew their load on the uh, on the on the Sonic Frontier stuff. Uh, the, the yeah. whole last week so they didn't really have much to announce in there in there in their yeah. thing it could have been a lot bigger if they didn't do the ign stuff hey mm. rainy day hideout thanks for the 10 gifted thank you i appreciate it pumping the numbers absolute legend <laughs> i ate brazilian steak with him oh yeah i did in in Boston. Nice. Uh anyway. That's it for the Sonic news. Oh no, it's not. Se yeah. Mega Drive well, Mini 2. Yes, uh Sega announced a they're coming out with a, another mini console, the Mega Drive Mini 2. That's Genesis for us in the US of A. Um it was announced last week. They didn't announce international release date for it just uh japan it'll be out october 27th of this year and cost roughly 9980 yen which is about 75 dollars us um it will be modeled after the model 2 version of the mega drive and it'll include the following games well these are the confirmed games for it uh bonanza brothers fantasy zone magical uh, Tarutokun, Man Mansions of Hidden Souls, uh, Pop Full Mail, Shining Force CD, Shining in the Darkness, Slip Seed, Sonic CD, Thunder Force 4, and Virtua Racing. Okay, interesting. So the, the big thing is we're getting Sega CD games in this. It's like Sonic CD and Shining Force CD. I like this a lot. Yeah. I wait. Yeah, they haven't done. Did they? They didn't do a. No, they did do a Genesis Classic. I'm dumb. Yeah, you have it. I have. It. I made a whole ass video on it. Yeah. But now they're just doing it again, but with CD games. Not all CD. Like Virtual Racing is a Genesis game. I think Thunder Force Four is a Genesis game. No, they're I'm doing. Saying, it, it, it's all this. Is it all of the same games that the original Mini no. had? No, no, it's going to be different games. Uh, and it's including games from the Sega CD this time. Okay. Because it's, it's, it's got 42 preloaded games. Yeah. Okay. And Sonic is one of them. Does it have two and three? No. Just just Sonic 1 read, and then... Six. Read the it doesn't have it. all 42! It says there's 42 games and then they give you 10 of them. The first Mega Drive Mini launched back in 2019 and came complete with 42 games preloaded, including Sonic the Hedgehog, Streets of Rage 2, and Kid Chameleon. It's talking about the original. Oh. So this will have none of the same games? It will. What's the overlap here? What's how many is over how many is overlapping here? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>
There was going to be a one-two switch uh, sequel, but it's got a weird development That's it. That's story. it with oh, that? Hey, okay. that. That's it. Right. We're moving on All before right. I pay okay. wood to punch you in the face the next time you podcast together. I just, so, I just want to know if it's going to have uh, any overlap of games. That's all I want to know. Is gonna, it going to overlap As of right not? now, no. As of right now, no. There is Since no it's confirmed be 50 games, overlap that one game of is games. 10 games. <sighs> Hey, Chris BX, thanks for the 46 months. I'm actually here live. Ha happy, happy summer break. Happy summer break, Chris BX. Thanks for being here. Yeah, I noticed uh, you didn't so... put this in the keep, Will. Yeah, there's I a... I did. I did. It was at the bottom. I put it at the bottom. Oh. Well, I'll delete that because I, I, I added it here. Um... The wild story behind Nintendo's unannounced 1-2 Switch sequel. This is by Imran Khan, who breaks a lot of stuff. Uh, yes. the, 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 the long short is that there was a game in development called Everybody's 1-2 Switch that had some weird shit going on. It was Jackbox Party Pack style, where you could like connect your phones and stuff and 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 play with like like a like a bunch of people mm -hmm. games could have lobbies as big as 100 players thus the name everybody's one two switch which is awesome it's like one two switch battle royale except it play tested very very poorly so they shelved the whole thing yeah i mean it could very well be a situation where they shelved it and then they're going to revisit it at another time. Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily canceled, but it's very interesting. Like one, two switch was like one of the best selling games at launch. It was popular for a time. It's reasonable to believe that that's a series that could Nintendo could continue, but they said no. <laughs> so I, I said on Twitter, this is a real, I feel really bad for all of those one, two switch fans. <laughs> <laughs> and people were like it sold a lot and like okay yeah. it sold a lot who are any of those people fans of the franchise like i don't i don't think so i think people bought it because there weren't a lot of switch games yeah i don't know like who's still playing it after launch you know not many people bought it after launch. like if you bought your switch after launch you did not buy one two switch yeah so Here's, here's another weird thing about this. The main mode of the game, the team battle mode, pit at least two teams of players against each other in various minigames. This mode prominently featured Horse, who would give color commentary during the game. During the localization process, sources started calling the game Horse Shit as shorthand. Wait, that didn't explain who Horse was. The I idea think it's just explaining... Like no, there's what a, they called him. No, there's a different. No, they called him. His name in the game was Horse. <laughs> uh, the idea on paper was solid. Nintendo EPD Group Four designed a host of the mini game based on in international appeal, a bipedal horse that looked like a man wearing a rubber horse mask. The game's text simply referred to him as horse because it sounded enough like the English word host that it would come across in different languages. Many games would ask players to physically move around the environment for things like musical chairs or use their phone to play bingo. There was even a game that resembled a virtual version of spin the bottle that involved saying something nice about another person. <laughs> And then it said it, it tested horribly. People didn't yeah. like it. Uh, they said a lot of it was boring. They said people didn't even want to finish the games they were playing. Uh, wow. so, and apparently, they even printed uh, like all of the cases for the game because I guess they were trying to work on reworking it. And they're like, what else could we do? Okay, let's print the game cases. So they printed game cases <laughs> and now they're just sitting on all these game cases. Well, now they have to make a game. <laughs> I know. That's what I was thinking. Like, yeah. I always said one, two switch. If that was a pack in game, it would have been more popular. Yeah. Uh, people would have liked it more. It would have had a similar effect as uh, Wii Sports.
Like imagine paying mm-hmm. fifty bucks for Wii Sports. I feel like it wouldn't. Yeah. Have, I feel like people wouldn't have liked it as much. Uh, but it, this sounds like it's like they wasn't. They weren't having fun at all. I think there was some internal yeah. discussion about just putting it on uh, Nintendo Switch Online, or. I mean, I don't know what they could do, but now they have a bunch of game cases they got to put the friggin' game in. So, yeah. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It could be a pack in for the next Nintendo Switch. Maybe they're shelving it for that. Yeah. Yeah. Very possible. Chris BX says, "No, sir. I don't have any use for rubber nipples, but do you have any rubber walrus protectors?" Call the police. <laughs> A lot of people in this chat are going to be very confused, and I'm not giving you any context. Yeah. No, no, you <laughs> idiots. Um, okay. Any notifications? No. Moving on. Hey, All there's right. biggest Nintendo news of the week. We're saving for now. <laughs> Pokemon Scarlet and Violet trailers with actual information about the game. This happened really early in the morning, I think. Yeah. And I could not care less. I waited like all day. I think I waited like a few days to actually watch this trailer. And it looks all right. There's like some yeah. things I have. I got to preface this by saying I have not been into Pokemon lately. I, I've been pretty disappointed by the last few games. Uh, Are these professors? Yeah, so the bisexual professors, uh, Scarlet and Violet, are going to have their own separate professors. Oh, that's pretty uh, cool. De- yeah, so Professor Sada and Professor Toro. De- depending on which version of the game you get, you're going to get one or the other. I kind of like that. Yeah, I saw some memes about them on the internet. People saying yep. they have really big looking for a third energy. <laughs> I yeah. happen to agree. Yes. Also, why does she have like fangs? Does he also have fangs? I don't think so. Are those not fangs? Maybe it's just, I think it's just a weird shot and like you're getting under her teeth, maybe. Yeah. And it kind of just looks like fangs. I think that's what it is. That's weird. Anyway, I think this looks just like Sword and Shield. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> it does. I'm not really convinced at all this is going to be any better than Sword and Shield. Uh, one of the big things it adds is uh, Scarlet and Violet allows multiplayer gameplay for up to four players, uh, along with series staples such as trading and battling. Uh, you will be able to explore the various locations of the region in these games with other players. You can discover new Pokemon, explore unfamiliar areas uh, with your friends and family, opening the door to an adventure more precious and fun than ever. So it looks like it's going to have drop-in, drop-out multiplayer where another uh, another player could just enter your game and explore the world with you as you collect Pokemon. See, that's really cool. Uh, I wouldn't mind just having another player in my game to just hang out, you know, just to like walk around and do shit. Uh, That's like some of the best times in like destiny and stuff is just sitting in the, in the, in the lobby, (laughs) just hanging out. Um, And I like that. So it's a full open world, so mm-hmm. you don't need to like be in the wild area to like to like link up with people, uh, which is cool. That sounds cool. Everything else looks the same <laughs> as, yeah. as as Sword and Shield. So I don't. Also, like if you are playing with other people, like if I join your game, what do we do? Like, are we gonna yeah. fight trainers together? I mean, you could do that. You can collect Pokemon together. You can. You just hang out. So what happens? Let's say we run I, across I we run across a Pokemon together. How do we proceed? I don't know. It like, didn't really. Is there one Pokemon and we it. both beat the shit out of the one Pokemon and now we're twice as powerful as that Pokemon? So we we freaking blaze through the Pokemon and then do we each get the Pokemon or do only one of us get the Pokemon? That was not explained. <laughs> 
Also, if we run across a trainer and a trainer tries to battle us, do we both gang up on that trainer twice as powerful as that trainer with 12 Pokemon now instead of just six and beat the shit out of his little Caterpie, a little bug boy's Caterpie, and then steal his money? Do we get twice as much money? Again, not explained. <laughs> so I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know how this is going to work. Yeah. We also got to see, uh, the new starter Pokemon, uh, one looks like a pig, uh, Lechonk, <laughs> and there Wait, is I... Pwami and Small Smoliv. Those are not... Wait, the pig is not a starter. Oh, it's not? No, that's just a new Pokemon. Oh, oh, right. It's the... Never mind. Never mind. The, the starters are the cat grass thing, the, the duck water guy, and the, and the alligator fire guy. Right, right. Uh, so I take back what I said, but we did get to see the new legendary Pokemon, uh, penis, Korea Don and Dick Boy, and the penis. He looks like a he looks uh, like a Mira big old, looks like a big old cock and balls. Yeah. Which uh, I wish I had this tweet ready. The guy who did the concept art for the Detective Pikachu movie. He also did some old popular fan art that made Pokemon look really realistic, and that's why he got hired for the Pokemon Detective Pikachu yeah. movie. He tweeted, they make them look like penises on purpose, and I learned that when I worked on Detective Pikachu. It's a very good base for a Pokemon <laughs> design. So that's the that's the psychology behind it. They make him look like a cock on purpose. Here's here there you he go. is. Here's 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 ball man. You really get it from behind right here. Oh, there it yeah. is. That's the guy right there. There's the culprit. <laughs> uh, other than that, uh, it will be out November 18th. You can pre-order it now. Uh, you can also get a double pack, which comes with both versions of the game. I also think it's really weird that they have stuff like. Like when they're showing the legendaries, there's this pre-rendered scene, not actual game footage. Yeah. There's no pre-rendered cutscenes at all in these Pokemon games. <laughs> yeah. So so like this is Oh my god, his balls are jet engines. <laughs> it's it's there's no pre-rendered cutscenes in the whole game. There's just they make the promotional stuff look better than what they use in the actual game. Yeah. Like, how, why not just play this when I encounter the Pokemon? I mean, that's probably going to be the trailer that plays in the beginning of the game, and then that's okay. It. True, true. It could, it could yeah. be the it could be the the opening. Oh, thank you, Mega Dragon. He found, they they found the they found the tweet. Oh, that's not. This isn't it. This isn't the one, but this is a one. Yeah. Oh no, this was it. This is it. People surprised that the new Legendary's silhouette is a dick and balls have not been paying attention. Not only has the shape been integrated from the beginning, but I heard while working on Detective Pikachu that this was no accident. And here's <laughs> uh, Charizard, Slowking, uh, Mewtwo, this guy, that guy, that guy, they're all balls. All, all dick and balls. Yeah. And then he said, nice to see a new Pokemon design getting back to the roots of what makes them successful. <laughs> and then he showed his the work he's done. Yeah. And it's gorgeous work. He does gorgeous work. Anyway. So I don't know. I mean, I'm going to buy it and play it, I guess, but I, I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to it. I, yeah. I have... I I have like Sonic Forces, I have my expectations very low. But <laughs> at the end of the day, I am excited to try a new Sonic game. Yeah. Pokemon, I have my expectations so low that I'm backwards. I'm like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh yeah, the state of play happened. That was the a big Sony deal. state of play happened, and that was a people seemed to like it. It was a good one. Uh, it kicked off really trying to poke the bear. I'm mm -hmm. the bear. Hi everyone. 
Uh, the Resident Evil 4 remake is real. It is coming out next year on PS5 and also Xbox Series and PC. Um, it is going to go be a complete overhaul of the game. It's going to be more in line with what they did with the Resident Evil 2 and 3 remakes. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, I, I watched this state of play on stream like uh, way after it happened. Uh, yeah. Because I heard it was good. So I decided to watch it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that Resident Evil 4 trailer was a bad trailer, right? <laughs> it was so dark. It like, like everything I... was like in black, and like you couldn't really see anything that was going on. Yeah, it did. Like it was a. T- I it was more of a s- tone piece than anything else. I didn't. I don't want to say the game looks bad because it doesn't. But the trailer like didn't really show anything. There was a yeah. lot in the trailer, but it was a lot of nothing. I mean, you got you you get a sense of what they're doing. It's like going to be a much darker, more serious take on Resident Evil Four. You got to see the village. You got to see like the the cult symbols all in certain places. You got to hear from certain characters. Um, you have to see certain characters. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna play it. Because it's I, Resident Evil 4. I feel like all the what? things that you said that they showed, they showed, like, barely any of it. Like, they showed, like, a frame here or there, and it was not clear what it was, even. Yeah, well, the you, you'd have to go back and, like, watch it in slow motion, frame by right. frame, to see what they're showing. And you have to know Resident Evil 4 well enough to, yeah. like, pick pick out what they're showing you. There were two things, well, I guess three things that looked familiar to me. One of them was Leon. I could tell it right. was Leon, so we got that. Uh, same voice actor from the Resident Evil 2 remake, so at least there's consistency. Okay. Uh, second thing was I saw like one of the saint-looking guys whose like, head turns into the worm thing. Like I saw yeah. a frame of that hit the screen at the end. So I was like, okay, well, that's one of the guys from Resident Evil 4. And then you see Ashley, which is the president's daughter, right? On a photo. But I had to ask like a thousand times, is that Ashley? Because Ashley's supposed to be like, like, like 13 or 14 or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I, I was like, that doesn't look like Ashley, though. Like, is that her? I don't understand. Is that like a love interest? I don't know why he's looking at this picture of this girl. I don't know. I don't know. It's because the original Resident Evil 4 was campy as hell and it wore it like a badge of honor. And it was a dis- yeah. it, like that was one of the Resident Evil 4 games. Like you can tell like there was an auteur behind it. Like it's a Shinji Mikami game through and through. This looks to be more in line with what they did on the two and three remake. And I love the Resident Evil two remake It's one of my favorite games of this generation. Mm -hmm. And I finally downloaded three. I'm excited to play that. Um, But that makes sense for those games. It does not make sense. It doesn't make sense to remake Resident Evil four for starters, Um, but it doesn't make sense to remake it in this style. Like, cause that's not what Resident Evil four (laughs) was. I think that the whole there's, there's like a, I don't know. There's like a tone that's like super serious, but with super serious, but has these weird things that you can't take seriously, but you like ignore them to like be immersed in the seriousness of it. And and that's like a uniquely Japanese thing. Like, yeah, it's Resident Evil and Metal Gear. There's they're like the story and the tone is very serious, but every once in a while you just get jarred and blindsided by like a funny thing. Right. Well, I mean, Resident Evil 4 was unique because it, it went hard more so into, like, the camp areas. So with, Resident like, Evil 4 with, compared like, to all of the ones before it yeah, well, was, like, yeah. an action movie. Like, like, like it, every once in a while he would, like, do a triple backflip and you're like, whoa, wait, where yeah. did that come from? I thought we were grounded yeah. in reality for a second. Yeah, but, like, at the same time, it was still very scary. Right. But I think, you know, they took all the wrong lessons from Resident Evil 4 which they put into five and six and then course corrected with seven. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't, cause like I said, like that was Shinji Mikami's vision through and through. And like, I don't see any of that in, in this 
trailer so far. Well, you, did you play seven or eight? I played seven. I did not play eight yet. Did was there any of that weird sort of like goofs or or, or campiness oh. in Resident Evil Seven? Yeah, there was. But it was also that was probably the most serious of any of the Resident Evil games. Um, it was also the most different because it wasn't about like zombies or the wider umbrella conspiracy. It was just about you being lost in a mansion in like a trailer park. Okay, basically. But there is a lot of like there is Resident Evil weirdness to it. I mean, in the beginning of the game, you get your hand cut off, and you reattach it yourself in a trailer park. Right. So, but. I don't know, man. Resident Evil 4 is a very special game in the annals of gaming overall, but to me in particular, because I famously, I'm not famously, I don't own every version of Resident Evil 4, but I own most of them. I have mm. the original GameCube version, the uh, GameStop limited edition. I have the PS2 version. I have the Wii version, which I have at my parents' house and forgot to bring it over for this video. I have... The Switch version, yes, it is physically released on Switch. I have it I have it on Steam. I have this is it in my Steam library right here. I have it on <laughs> Xbox One. Here it is in my Xbox One library. So I I've played I played the PS4 version. I played the iPhone version. Uh I I love this is my favorite game. So don't fuck this up. And it already looks like you're fucking it up. You're, and I'm mad that I have to buy a whole new system to play it. You're saying you're a uh, Resident Evil 4 purist, is what you're saying. I ex I understand that it's dated in a lot of ways. And I would I would accept the argument that a more modern control scheme would benefit the game. And I think that's something that could easily be implemented in mm -hmm. like a patch or whatever. The the whole the redo the whole thing is like that's a lot because Resident Evil Four is like perfect. It's it's like one of the one of the few games I would categorize as as close to perfect as possible because everything is finely tuned and perfectly laid out and designed and like everything's there for a reason. And if you mess with that, you're messing with what the game actually is. Right. So I'm I don't know. I don't know. They did a great job with Resident Evil 2, um, but I don't know. I mean, Resident Evil 4 is a different beast. That's all I'll say. Next on the list was Street Fighter 6. Now, I'm not a big Street Fighter fan, but I have to say, there's like a weird, like, uh, like RPG-looking world. Yeah, like, it's got open world elements to it for yeah. some reason. I was I was afraid and, to say open world because of the discussions we've had previously <laughs> in the <this> show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this part like is that a character you create? I think it's a character in the game. Like I think it's one of the street fighters. It looks like Shenmue almost. Like it's yeah. a 3D like you're walking around in an environment like talking to people and stuff. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know, man. Like I, I know people didn't like Street Fighter V when it first came out, and like eventually it got patched to be better, uh, as it were, to bring it all back. But I don't know what they're doing with this. It, it like this looks substantially different from like the past Street Fighter games. I, I kind of, I'm kind of into it. Uh, I think it looks yeah. pretty good. Uh, there's Leffen, it's, the it's, new character. <laughs> it's running on the Resident Evil engine, the RE engine. What? Which, yeah. which Resident Evil? The the it's the RE all, engine. It's the all one the, they all the new all the ones? new ones starting with seven. Hmm. Even the remakes, the remakes are are in that too. Yeah, Re Resident Evil Seven Village and the remakes all run on the same engine as Street Fighter. That's probably why they included the open world stuff because they were like, well, yeah. this is a three D engine, so let's just have people walk Might around. As well, yeah. I th I mean, it looks pretty good. Uh, again, I'm not yeah. a big. Uh, fighting game guy but this does look very good i mean i like fighting games um but i am not the type of person to like talk about like the intricacies of fighting games like aside from the visual flourishes of this game it looks like street fighter and that's all that really matters 
but I can't tell you like, oh, Chun Li's doing like this sort of counter parry from this game and like the chip damage on uh, this character that Ryu is doing and whatnot. So I don't know, but that looks fun. <laughs> that looks like a fun game. Also of note, they changed the logo. There was yes. some previous discourse about how the logo was just an Adobe uh, asset. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they changed it. So yes. that's interesting. Yeah. It still doesn't look like a Street Fighter logo, but at least it's yeah. it's a new logo. Yeah, it kind of looks like a like a like an Adidas advertisement. Yeah. Uh but it looks cool. The characters look cool. Chun Li's yeah. got thicker thighs than she's ever had in her whole life. Yes. Good for her. And it would be on you, girl. a new Street Fighter game if they didn't up the thickness of her thighs. Yes. Uh I guess the biggest deal was Final Fantasy 16. People were going nuts about yes. that. Coming out next year. I think it's a console exclusive. Uh, Street Fighter 6 and Resident Evil 4 are coming to Xbox and PC as well. But I think mm -hmm. Final Fantasy 16 is only coming to PS5. Well, people were excited about this. Uh, I, I I mean, I haven't, I haven't ever been interested in Final Fantasy. I'm not going to yeah, start mean, now. It, it, uh, I know every Final Fantasy game is different, but like this just... I have no idea what's going on, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm I, I just I'm just yeah I'm not into this sort of I guess yeah. style of, of anything uh, <laughs> what, uh, I guess that was the biggest news uh, then there's yeah. Resident Evil Village is getting PSVR 2 stuff yeah they showed off a bunch of PSVR 2 stuff including Resident Evil Village uh, Resident Evil 4 remake is going to get uh, VR stuff Horizon Call of the Mountain they showed off Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners, Chapter 2, uh, and No Man's Sky, all on PSVR 2. Interesting. Yes. Uh, yeah, there's also, a, there was a long while of yeah. PSVR 2 stuff. Yes. Uh, they also showed off that uh, cyberpunk cat game, Stray. Uh, that's going to launch in July as part of the new PS Plus uh, Extra and Premium. This actually looks sick, though. Like it I, does. I I, it, nice. it's it looks like metal gear cat like yeah like there's like s platforming and stealth stuff like i'm i'm super interested in this game yeah and i'm not even a cat guy no nope. but but this game actually just looks good <laughs> yeah so i so. i'm i'm this got me more excited for 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 cat game yeah yeah and if you have ps plus uh extra or premium it'll be included in your membership so that's fun that's great yeah. Uh, uh, finally going for the off... Game Pass. Uh, yeah. Getting Game Pass at the throat. Yeah. Next, they showed off um, Marvel Spider-Man is finally coming to PC uh, this year. Uh, and Miles Morales will come uh, at the end of the year. Very cool. Which is cool. Uh, then, this was my game of the show. I don't know about any of you guys. This was uh, sick. Roller Drome? Roller oh Drome my God. looked sick. More people need to be on about Roller Drome. This game is amazing. For those for the podcast listeners, it's basically Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, but with rollerblades and guns. And in the art style of Mobius. Not Morbius. Mobius. Mobius. Yes. The artist Mobius. Uh it's created by the developers of Ali Ali World. So wow. that's cool. It's a radically different game for them. Yeah. But yeah, I oh my god, I am so pumped. Like it just looks this is what I'm talking about. This is like awesome looking. This is a new unique thing. Yeah. I, I I'm, oh. I'm I think this looks great. I was like sold yeah. on the art style alone and then they and then I mean it just looks the fucking game part, ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> like you you tell people this concept and you're like, "Oh my god." Mm -hmm. So, oh man, yeah. Everybody keep an eye on this. You heard it here first. Wolf Den Podcasts. Seal of Approval. Game yeah. of show. <laughs> this looks fantastic. Uh, yeah. Uh, next, they showed off the Callisto Protocol, which was basically the creator of Dead Space's spiritual successor to Dead Space. Looks like Dead Space. So Yeah, it looked, like it, it, it looked so much like Dead Space that I kept saying, is this the Dead Space remake? Yeah. And it's not, but... Uh, why are they making a spiritual successor? Did they lose the license or something? Well, no. They left EA because they wouldn't let them make Dead Space. So uh... they went to go make their own Dead Space. And then the EA is like, hey, 
we're gonna remake Dead Space. <laughs> oh, so yeah, the game lost that the we license. never cared about to begin with. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, that's cool. I'm glad they're doing their thing again. Yeah. Uh, after that was uh, season a letter to the future, a game I don't remember being part of this uh, live stream. <laughs> I do because I've seen it before. Uh, I remember this oh, yeah. game from somewhere else. Uh, it's probably in another. It's probably in another showcase. Yeah. Uh, then Tunic, which is great. It's already on Game Pass and it's on Steam and it's on. It's not on Switch. Not uh, yet. Not yet. But it'll come to PS4 and PS5 in September. Mm-hmm. Uh, and lastly, there's the dating sim action adventure. At Eternite. 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 Eternal, that, now, Eternal now, Life. Eternite. I was now this also piqued my interest because just shut up, Will. Because, <laughs> because it's like it's how you how you describe it. Uh don't don't say it's a weeb game. It it's they what do they call it? An action a dating, dating action sim? game. Yeah. So yeah. it's like Bayonetta. But you're dating all these girls, and, and there's, and there's, there's smooching. Yeah. There's a little smoot. You can smooch all these girls. Yeah, it, it's it pretty definitely, cool. Next to Roller Drome, it's it's definitely the more one of the more unique games that they showed off in this state of play. Yeah. Because yeah, you know, it's not very. It's not every day you see an action dating game. You either get action games. Or dating games, and there were the yeah. two shell twain. But here where they are, where you could smooch all these girls, and maybe a guy yeah. even. <laughs> Action games and dating games went on a date, and this is the result. <laughs> yeah. So that's early 2023. So honestly, that's it, right? That this was yeah the best state of play that I've ever seen. Usually, state yeah, of plays cool. are really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, this was this was very good. Uh, Minor quibbles about certain remakes of games I like aside. Uh, they showed off a lot of good stuff. A lot of things fans actually want to see. Um, sprinkled in with like cool new things here and there. Uh, and it had Roller Drome. So <laughs> yes. what more could you ask for? Have we told Hannah about that awkward fascination with the game? I immediately showed her the game. I said, watch this trailer. <laughs> and her first, the first thing she said back was, why does that guy have a penis on his arm? Because there's a scene where it's like a tentacle. Yeah. You know what's going to happen. Yeah. Uh, we don't need to read RE4 remake details, right? Because we just no, talked that about was RE4. part of the other article, yeah. All right, so uh, let's plow through some more of this. French bans English words like esports. What the hell? Yeah, they, they want to... So the French government wants to basically take words that are English, uh, that they that they say in English like esports and programmer and live streamer and like give them f like actual french language equivalents so like uh a pro gamer would be a here we go gonna, say, gonna speak french <laughs> uh journeur professionnel <laughs> that sounded good all right and then a streamer would be a journeur animateur and direct so that's what i want to be referred to as from now on <laughs> So, I, why though? Do they just not, are they trying that hard to not adopt any English ever? I, I, this was specifically about, uh, this was specifically about gaming, uh, terms, but it is part of a wide ranging attempt by the French government to ward off According to this article, ward off the slow invasion of slang and jargon from English speak English speaking worlds. That's basically so it's, dumb. It's their scared attempt to preserve the French language in all aspects. That's stupid. Yeah. We say French words all the time. Rendezvous. Yeah. French fries. You know? Omelet. Omelet. I think that's <laughs> French. Um, so yeah, I mean, also like a lot of Japanese is just English with a Japanese accent. So like, yeah, do you think they care? 
they don't care. Yeah. Like, why are you? Why are you care? I, it's be, it's better if we all just homogenize and just start speaking the, the same language eventually. One Earth. <laughs> One Earth. No, like, like it's uh, not. It's not like, like, like we're comfortable taking some French words too if we need to. We'll say it. Yeah. We're, we're gonna bastardize it, but you know, le chunk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's really uh, stupid and very uh, closed-minded of them to to yeah. do that. If, if it, it's like it's the government trying to force you to 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 change the way you speak, like like just let it ha yeah. let things happen naturally. What's the problem? Yeah, if people if people adopt the word esport from English, then it's esport. You know? Yeah. If if there was going to be a French equivalent, they they would have come up with it by now. Right. Right. Uh, okay, so we got Prince of Persia remake delisted from stores. Oh, no. Uh, so I'll just summarize this real quick. Uh, stores like GameStop and Best Buy are taking down the Prince of Persia re Santa Time remake uh, from their websites. You can no longer pre-order it anywhere. Um, this led to rumors of cancellation, but Ubisoft is insisting that it's just being delayed. I'm I'm sure that so, it's got to be reworked or something, and they're they're gonna push it push it back a little bit. They are they are trying to get this game out. They recently switched developers. It's now being developed by uh, their Montreal mm -hmm. division, which did the original Prince of Persia: Sands of Time. Um, yeah, they really want this game to come out, and they're doing everything they can to get it to come out. But didn't a previous I, build leak? Was that a while uh, ago? I think are a you really old. And... What? Are you thinking of Skull and Bones? Because a build of that leaked. No, I could not care less about Skull and Bones. <laughs> right. It was something Prince of Persia like, and I'm pretty sure it leaked. Uh, but it was a it was an old thing that they pitched and didn't work out or something. Something like that. Yeah, it was like a more like gritty, realistic take of Prince of Persia. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's sad news. Yeah. Uh, we also have Animal Crossing to shut down in 2061. <laughs> Please uh, explain so this to me. So people were like, uh, who is it? A Reddit post by user uh, AdTrue4863 uh, seemingly shows that anyone who plays the game for another 39 years uh, or who forces their clock forward 39 years will be forced Ooh. to set their Switch clock back to keep playing. So basically, uh, in... Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons, they had like you can play the the internal clock has to be set somewhere between January first twenty uh, January first two thousand and December thirty first twenty sixty. Interesting. I guess the there was like a limited uh, memory, they, like you couldn't play it forever, so they had to set an end date, and that's what they set the end date to. That's very bizarre. There's a lot. I mean, yeah. Programming is a lot of weird, wacky finding out what what yeah. workarounds you can do. But having like a like a definitive end date seems like it seems like it probably yeah. was a not a great idea. Yeah. Um I mean by that point you'll probably be on to whatever the next Animal Crossing is on the next Switch We'll system. all be dead. The heat death of yes. the earth will come in twenty fifty nine. Yeah. So uh, not that big of a deal. Just uh, just an interesting little curio. Mm -hmm. And lastly here, we have uh, more m more of that more of that little sneaky golden eye remake that's coming out. Okay. So a while ago, the the achievements for the Xbox Live Golden Eye HD re-release. Re-release, uh, that's a better way to put it. Yeah. Um, the achievements were leaked and they wound up on fan sites like uh, Achievement Hunter and whatnot. Uh, this week, uh, those same achievements were found on the official Xbox website. Okay. So why would why would Xbox put achievements on their official website for a game? That hasn't been released yet. Yeah, no, this is definitely a thing that's happening. Yeah. 
<laughs> this is for sure a thing. And and they have screenshots and it looks like uh yeah. it looks like the original game. Looks pretty much untouched. Now, if you don't know the history, Rare did when they were bought by Microsoft, they did make a full GoldenEye remake. And they were gonna put it out on Xbox Live um for various legal reasons, be it with Nintendo or Eon Productions, who own the Bond license. That never happened. They made the Perfect Dark remake uh, re-release instead. Um, not too long ago, the Xbox Live GoldenEye leaked online, and people got it and were playing it. Um, now, it looks like it's actually... I mean, the rumor is it's going to actually be released in an official capacity. Um, and this is the biggest clue that it might actually be happening. It it could be a scheduled thing that maybe they were planning on doing it and they couldn't get the licensing worked out, but the scheduled post happened anyway. Yeah. Um, also, it looks like it's not on the website anymore. <laughs> <'Cause>, oh. <laughs> some, they oh, found yeah. out that they messed up and they took it down. Yeah. Um, it should be noted that Xbox is going to be a part of Summer Games Fest next week, and they're going to have a Ooh. a preview. They're going to have their press conference on June twelfth, so that will be the time to announce it. All right, that's my guess. My guess was that the Summer Games Fest was supposed to be last week, and yeah. they scheduled or or they just missed messed up the date. Uh, but I think that it was scheduled and they and they, and they messed it up. Um. So yeah, I would I would expect some golden eye in, in, in that yeah. conference. <laughs> Otherwise, that's all the news, right? Yes, that's it. We're done. Now we can do the Twitter the Week, Twitter the Week, Twitter the Week. This is by Beetle Moses. It's Blue from Blue's Clues yelling, <laughs> hit him with the chair! And then it's Steve hitting what I think is Joe with the, with the blue chair. Yeah. I mean, the red chair. Yeah. <laughs> In a wrestling ring. That's, uh, the, that's the whole comic. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's a good one. That's all you need. Yeah. That's all you need, really. Uh, all right. Flow797, thank you for the three months. Happy three months. Thank you. Uh, Luke Antone, thank you for the five months. Have either of you watched The Boys? I'm also done with season two. I'm no. almost done with season two. <laughs> it looks really good. Um, yeah, I just I have no time for anything anymore. <laughs> I've seen a lot of clips on YouTube of it, and it looks really good. Yeah, but I it's the same I'd... thing. The same thing with Invincible. I've seen clips. I know the memes, but have not seen the show. Right. Oh, there's a new. Oh, it is. Does Obi Wan come out at midnight, or is it like three in the morning or something? Three in the morning. Yeah, I'll probably be up. Um, Obi Wan and Miss mm-hmm. Marvel are t- are Wednesday. Oh, interesting. You, I, I, you, Disney you used to do Star Wars and then Marvel. I can't do both at the same time. Right. <laughs> Don't do that again. Um. Oh, we got to do an unboxing real quick. Now, this okay. is something that we've had for a while, and I just did some cleaning and found it. So I'm sorry that it's taken <laughs> us this long to do this, but uh, we might have even shown this on the show, but I don't think I took them out of the box. So I'm going to do that now. Okay. Uh, what's this going to look like? Oh, it looks good. Uh, check it out. We got Tom Talk. They make like switch cases and stuff. They made uh, pro controller cases that I've been wanting Ooh. to try. Look at this guy. This so Hello. I have a pro controller case that I've had in my videos and stuff. Yeah. Uh, like 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 my my uh, what's in my switch bag and stuff. And I've been interested in this because the one that I have is like like just some like crappy one that I got on Amazon. Like a generic one, yeah. Like a generic one, yeah. This one looks a lot more legit. Now this is a like it. This yeah. is a fake pro controller, <laughs> but for our. <laughs> For our purposes, it's fun. I mean, that it could damage your Pro Controller. You might as well test it with a fake one first. True. This is a... Oh, it's got a charge port. That's sick. Oh, wow. That's that sick. Is sick. That's cool. Now, does it take any USB-C? Yep. Cool. That's really nice. that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, it gives you a lot of room for the, for the thumbsticks. Yeah. Uh, but they also have a PlayStation 1. Oh. So this is for the DualSense. 
So this is a hard shell case for the dual sense, which I have right here. And it's not moving at all. <laughs> it's got a pretty beefy looking hinge there. Yeah. I like the way it latches. This is not it going looks anywhere. Snug and sturdy. It is very, it's very sturdy. <laughs> yeah. Like And there's of course an Xbox one. Yeah. So I do you need this? No, but if you're serious about your controller and you travel a lot with your controller, these are a good thing to have. I think if you are ever going to put a controller in a backpack, you want something to put it in. Yeah. Uh, especially like, so I would say Xbox control. Well, most controllers, you don't want to move the thumbsticks at all when you're not uh -huh. using it because sometimes you'll put it in your bag and the thumbstick will get pushed one way and you remember back in the day that was really bad for controllers to like leave it upside down and have the have yeah. the thumbstick always pressing one way that was a bad thing to do um so you don't want that to happen when you're when it's in your bag also uh with a pro controller especially especially that battery is going to die if you throw it in your bag something's always going to knock up against it it's going to wake up for five minutes trying to search for your Nintendo Switch. It might even turn your Nintendo Switch on if you have it in the same bag. So yeah. you're going to want something to put that in. Uh, I, I feel like the DualSense controller isn't going to have the same sort of issue of turning on randomly because it is a little harder to turn on a DualSense controller, but the thumbsticks you still want to keep nice and nice and safe. Yeah. Uh, so thank you, Tom Talk, for... Uh, giving me cases i can now uh use this instead of my generic case now i just have controllers on my desk oh <laughs> did we ever talk about this uh i guess we don't have to but this is the wireless retro fighters controller uh did we the, the wireless oh this is for switch and pc oh i gotta try this out with nintendo switch online it's the uh Brawler 64, oh, the Brawler N64 oh. styled uh, controller for the Nintendo Switch. So Interesting. I'll have to give that a shot because I tried the original Brawler 64, the USB one with the Switch with Nintendo Switch Online, and it didn't. It didn't really work. Yeah. It did. Some of the buttons were messed up. All right, that's it for the unboxing. Now cool. we'll talk to you guys real quick. Yes, starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Uh, I, they have, uh, no Banana Suits has requested a link to the Tom Talk case. So let me do that real quick. I'll put it okay. in the chat because I haven't. I can generate an affiliate link. All right, you do that. I'll read the comments. We got uh d linton said the spam bots have arrived in your comments section oh no i i guess we had a lot of spam in last week's comments uh, uh yeah so so if you see a comment from us first of all we like never comment on the friggin' uh, no. <laughs> on, on the podcast channel because we answer you here anyway yeah. uh second of all if you see a comment anywhere about a giveaway on any of the Wolf Den channels, it is fake. We we yeah. do not do giveaways in comments. We never will. I mean, never say never, but we'll probably never be doing giveaways in comments. So yeah, uh, make sure there's a verified check next yeah. to any comment that looks like a Wolf Den comment. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, all right. Let me let me go here. Also, we got a three-star review on iTunes that said we say um too much. So I'm trying not to, but it's very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know you don't where... Like you do a podcast. Here you go. Okay. Uh, so D. Litton, uh, yeah. Gligar Guy says, actually hope Will corrects Bob's mistakes becomes a regular segment. Oh uh, yeah, where's that? Uh, I noticed you, you had no, no corrections for me this week. You, you were good this week. I almost, I almost got you uh, <laughs> when Wood 
when Wood didn't know that ACDC was from Australia, and then he caught himself. So that that's you did get your boys did good. Wait, this what do you week. mean? We'll see, we'll see. Oh, do you think they were He's, from New Zealand? Well, no. First he said, first he made the joke as the Australian. I got to say back in black, and then you didn't know they were from Australia. I didn't. Just disappointing. Uh, and then Wood like doubted himself for a second, and ah, then okay. he's like, "Yeah." So, if you want to get technical, Malcolm and Angus Young and Bon Scott are from Scotland, and Brian Johnson's from England, but they all just live in Australia. Um, but they are considered an Australian institute. So. Oh, so how could you be mad at me for not knowing that? <laughs> They're not even from there. Uh, uh, Keyholes says, I'm intrigued by all the new Windows handhelds coming out, but this still feels like the early adopter stage, and I'm happy to sit back and wait for things to be perfected. They all feel like they're in their original chonky Nintendo DS phase. I'm hoping the DS Lite stage is coming next. There, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> funny you say that. We, we got to start talking about I got to start bringing the emulator news uh, here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Retro Game Corpse. Uh, there, there's a new Pal Kitty device that's coming out that looks like a GPD Win or a GPD XD, which looks like a Nintendo DS. So, yeah, if you're looking for the for the DS style, uh, you might get it yeah. soon. But yeah, no, that I mean, all of these little handheld devices, these these wacky, weird Chinese and Hong Kong devices. Uh, <laughs> what would you call a Hong Kong, like ch like ch Chinese, like chi like if it's from China, it's Chinese. If it's from Hong Kong, yeah. it's Hong Kong. Well, I mean, right. <laughs> this is where you get into trouble because China says they own Hong Kong. They don't. So, so let's <laughs> let's keep going here. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any uh uh yeah uh, chinese sponsors we could say whatever the fuck we <laughs> want <laughs> hong kongan says my friend from hong kong hong kong okay. i've never heard that before yeah um so yeah a lot of these devices from that are chinese or hong kongan um they uh they, 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 they're, 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 there's always something wrong, and 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 yeah, they are in their like early adopter stage. There's always something going on, and they keep getting closer and closer, but they're still not there. Anyway, oh, oh now everybody's talking about the the situation in, in Hong Kong. All right, they <laughs> China is being really oppressive to to Hong Kong wants freedom from from China, and they're they're not they're yeah. not giving up. Um, they they want independence and it's not it's not it, it's not yeah. working out too good. Uh, anyway, next next comment. Uh, Alejandro Quinones, the nerd time. Technically, Anakin is still the chosen one. Luke functions as sort of a catalyst in helping Anakin and Vader. In Return of the Jedi, a Vader is redeemed by his son and defeats until the sequels the Emperor, in turn saving the galaxy. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, it was Anakin who ultimately defeats Palpatine at the end, so. He's still the chosen one. He just went down, uh, the dark, a dark path for a little bit before his son could, uh, right the <laughs> ship, as it were. For a little bit. Like, yeah. like 23 years. <laughs> 23 years, yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, no, that's a good point. That's a good point because yeah. he is the guy who killed Palpatine, and Palpatine was yeah. the real, the real bad guy the whole time. He, he he did what he was supposed to do. It just took a really long and unfortunate time to get there. It also just so happened that the chosen one had to slaughter like thousands of people in those twenty three yeah. years. So, kind of sucks for the yeah. chosen one to have to do that. But you know, well, I mean. The less the lesson of the prequels was don't believe chosen one myths because they never go the way you want them to. Hmm. Anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, let's talk to yes. the chat real quick, and then we're out of here. Yes. Uh, Shadow Bender says you've got to pronounce ACDC like an Australian. Do you know how they pronounce it in Australia? No, but I, I feel like I'm gonna hate it. 
Akadaka. No, they don't. They do. It's Akadaka. How come Wood didn't? Was he trying to speak I English? I don't think he's really Australian. Oh, you think he's faking it the whole time? <laughs> that guy, uh, Liam, who is the curse to golf guy. Yes. Uh, I, I did not know what his accent was. And I was like, I think he's Australian. I don't know. And then, and then he, he's Wood. He's English, but he lives in Japan. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so. Wood, Wood immediately was like, what, it, what are you speaking right now? <laughs> Uh, did you tell Will that you're cheating on him with another podcast? He figured it out on his own. We're in an, we're in an open podcast <laughs> relationship. Yes. What it is. Otaku Sam says, Joy-Cons are going to work on Mac. I know. I did see that. Yes. I, yes. I'm interested. I'm interested in that. I only watched like a summary of the of the developer conference. I didn't watch like the whole two-hour thing because who's got time for that? I want so, to see the gaming stuff. stuff. I'm interested yeah. in the gaming stuff because I mean M1s are super powerful and and I'm disappointed that there's not a lot of games I could that could utilize the the my M1 chip. I mean when we think of video games we think of like, you know, video games. We think of like AAA video games, but like whenever Apple shows off a video game, it's always either something older or it's an iOS game that they ported over to Mac. It's not the same. Right. Tunic was it ran great. It, it broke the first time yeah. I opened it, but then it ran it ran great. And and it's Steam, so my save file transfers and everything is great. Yeah. Uh Chris BX says funny, I was actually thinking of putting together an um anyway compilation video from from headline transitions. Oh god. Oh yeah, because at the end of because Chris does the friggin' uh timestamps and every time we're <laughs> done with the with the topic we give an um because we don't know because we're yeah. done and we don't know how to just be quiet for a second and move on <laughs> they show resident uh, village running on a native m1 yes uh yeah that that is, I, I saw that that was that's, cool it's like the first game that's like yeah. actually utilizing like a more in, modern in a, game yeah. yeah in a real way uh, my Steam file saves cross Mac and Windows for Vampire Survivors. It's the best thing ever. That is I cool. don't I don't know that game. Steam is very good about, uh, you know, transferring your saves over from the cloud. So I wish Nintendo was. Yeah. Why does Vampire Survivors wish... look like Age of Empires? Is it a vampire themed RTS? No, it's like a top-down, like, like, horde. It's like a top-down horde game. Oh, didn't we talk about this game a while ago? I feel oh, like this game is familiar. Never heard of this game before in my life. Vampire it's Survivors Castlevania is a inspired roguelike. Twin stick shooter with only one stick. What the Interesting. fuck? Well, I guess you just move in the direction that you're going to shoot in. Yeah. It's like the top-down game of the last two months. Oh. Oh, so it's pretty new. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Edward really wants us to talk about Sega, uh, c considering uh, Dreamcast and Saturn Mini, but is worried about they extreme costs. Uh, I guess they they were gonna make that instead of the Genesis Two Mini, but because of the cost, they didn't. I think a Dreamcast Mini would be fucking sick. I mean, don't underestimate Sega Saturn nostalgia. Like that's pretty big. I think a lot of. I think I heard somebody else talking about this, and they said a lot of the uh, Dreamcast games have already gotten HD ports. So yeah. It wouldn't be hard for them to just put them on a mini console. Yeah, I would. I would love a Sega Genesis, or I'm sorry, Mega Drive Two Mini. If they put yeah. Burning Burning Rangers on there, I want to. Yeah. All right, no, that was a Saturn game. I would buy a Saturn Mini if they put Burning Rangers on there because I've been <laughs> trying to play that game and it's very hard to emulate, so I haven't really been able yeah. to. Because I want to play some Sega Saturn games, and there's like not a lot. There's like barely any good there's, Sega Saturn games. There's not games. a lot. 
There's not a lot. <laughs> it's very difficult to emulate. Mm -hmm. um, actual Sega Saturn uh, games and hardware go for an exorbitant amount of money because it wasn't a very popular system at the time. So, yeah, hopefully they, you know, Sega acknowledges the Saturn and starts re-releasing some Saturn games. Okay. All right, we're done. Thanks for All hanging right. out, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice. But no matter where you get this show from, folks, Please be sure to subscribe to like, subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Almost, almost got you there. Almost that yeah. little trip up there. Sunburn's really getting to me. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'm very busy. I uh, ha I'm working on two big projects right now, so I haven't really been streaming. Uh, and I don't know when I'm going to stream again because I'm still I, uh, my video is going to be late this week probably uh, I'm working on a lot of things so who knows but uh, keep it locked here at twitch.tv slash wolf to put the notifications on you might see me pop up randomly one of these days uh, thank you for watching guys I don't have I guess we'll just raid AJ like we always do there you go uh, thanks for being here, guys, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.